Maternal Instinct, Chapter 9, Confessions of a Teenage Superhero. Over the years, Dr. Anne Possible had come to expect the unexpected. How could she not? After all, her daughter was the world-famous teen hero, Kim Possible. So, when her daughter had arrived at the hospital seven months ago with someone who was one of her biggest enemies, she was surprised but quickly recovered. Then, when she found out the woman was pregnant with her daughter's child after a fluke of genetic manipulation and bad aim, she was shocked. But again, she was able to recover quicker than a normal mother would have. Though the idea of actually living with the former villainess had taken much longer to get used to. Still, in time, Anne had gotten to know Shiko quite well, and saw a part of her as a part of the Cat Puzzle family. From what Kim had told her of the woman's real family, it was definitely a step up. What took the most unity to was the idea of just how close Kim and Shiko had become. They started off as one would have expected, by fighting almost constantly, and Shiko resisting Kim's help at every turn. But as Shiko's stomach grew, so did her patience and willingness to accept help. Her relationship with Kim grew as well, slowly going from rivals, to friends, to co-mothers, to perhaps something more. Anne wasn't completely surprised by the fact, given how her relationship with James changed during her first pregnancy. But it was still something that would take longer than usual to get used to. Still, she had suspected it for a while, and with the picture the twins took, it seemed like the two women's relationship could turn that corner at any minute. So now she had come to expect it. She thought she was prepared for it. She thought wrong. It seemed seeing something in your mind and seeing in reality were two completely different things. So when Anne stumbled upon her daughter, locked in a tight embrace with Shigo, and kissing her full in the mouth, she let a surprised gasp and dropped the laundry basket she had been holding. The muffled thud it produced from hanging the carpeted floor caused the two women to jump slightly and break their kiss. Kim turned her head while holding Shigo, received a shock of her life when she saw who was standing there. Mom! She shouted in a mix of surprise and excitement. I didn't want to tell her daughter it was okay, that she had been expecting this kind of thing, so she wasn't mad or hurt, just surprised. Of all, she wanted to tell her that she still loved her. She wanted to do all this, but she couldn't. All she could do was look at the moment in the doorway, with her eyes and mouth open wide in shock. Even after she recovered, she still couldn't find her voice. Instead, quickly picked up the laundry basket before slipping out of the room, slamming the door behind her. Kim stared at the door in silence for a few seconds before she let it go of Shigo and walked towards it as if in a daze. Mom? She whispered, sounding like a child. She continued to stand there in a daze for a moment longer before something finally seemed to snap. Oh God! She cried out in a horrified voice as he placed her hands on her forehead and began to pace. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, she saw us! My mother saw us! She saw us! Kissing! Oh God, what am I going to do? As Kim continued to pace and ramble, she blinked as she tried to process what just happened. She had been kissing Kim, which actually felt good, great even, when her mother came into the room for some reason. Despite them kissing, stared for a bit, then left. Then Kim broke off the kiss, also stared for a bit, and started to completely freak out. So she was saying to be caught kissing her. In fact, that's probably exactly what it was. The thought made Shiko's blood boil. Before she knew it, she was scowling, and both of her hands were clenched to fists. Oh, that's real nice, Kim! She sighed, drawing the redhead's attention. What? Kim asked, seemingly confused. Don't wet me. You know exactly what I'm talking about! Shiko accused, jamming a finger in her direction. Seems like it's okay for you to kiss me behind closed doors, but the second someone finds out, it's all, Oh God, what have I ever done? What is everyone going to think of me? This is wrong, I should never have done it! I never said that, Kim protested. No, but you were thinking it. I could tell by the way you were freaking out. Because my mother just spotted us kissing. The girl shouted, throwing her hands wild in the air. I think that's cause enough to freak out. Because you're ashamed of me. I'm not ashamed of you. Could have fooled me. I mean, I seriously thought we were having a moment there. We were finally connecting. I poured my heart out to you. That was the song. But that's exactly how I felt. And I thought that was how you felt too. That is how I felt. How I feel right now. I do care about you. Then why are we yelling? I don't know. They both stopped. It took a moment to cast their breaths as well as calm down. When he was sure to get carry on a more civil conversation, Kim walked back over to Shigo and took the woman's hands on her own. Look, I'm sorry, she said softly. You're right. I shouldn't have freaked out like that. But this is a lot to take in all at once and I guess I couldn't handle it. 
thought you could do anything. Zuko quit on a slight smirk. That includes flying out the handle every once in a while. Well, if you don't make it a habit, I guess I can forgive you. The pale woman replied, smirk whining a bit. I guess I did overreact a bit, too. Since that with everything that's happened with my family over the years, just have a knee-jerk reaction when it seems like someone's insane with me. But I'm not, Kim said, placing her hand on Shigo's cheek. I was just caught off guard, is all. And I read too much into it, Shigo admitted with a sigh. Great start to a relationship, huh? Yeah, Kim huffed. A light knock on the door caught their attention, and this time they prepared themselves. Kim pulled back from Shigo, but still held her hand as she faced the door. She took a few deep breaths to calm herself before addressing the person knocking. You can come in now, Mom, she called. The door opened only enough to allow Anne to poke her head through. She looked at the two and smiled brightly when she saw that they were no longer fighting. She pulled the door open fully, but remained in the doorway. Girls, I think we need to have a talk. She said in a very parental way that made Kim shudder a bit. Um, yeah, I think we do too, Kim replied, earlier excited returning. Thus as the nervousness started to overcome her, her body began to shake. She felt a slight pressure on her left hand. She looked down to find Shigo, giving it a reassuring squeeze, and the same feeling reflecting in her emerald eyes when she looked up at him. A simple smile played across Kim's face at the action, and then turned to face her mother again, felt much more confident. With a nod of acknowledgement, Kim let her mother lead her and Shigo onto the room, into the living room, where they sat on the couch for a moment in uncomfortable silence. Mom? Let me explain, Kim spoke up. No, Kimmy, it's all right. I know what happened. Anne replied a bit uneasily. I actually have been expecting this to happen, but I guess I wasn't as ready as I thought it was. Oh, uh, okay then. Kim stopped when she realized what her mother said. Wait, you expected this to happen? Of course. Someone would have to be completely blind not to see how close you two have gotten. Anne couldn't help us. We have! Kim and Shigo asked in unison as they both looked at each other. Anne couldn't help but smile at that. Yes, you have. As much as I know you two hate it, I think the picture the boy took proves it. Oh yeah, that! Shigo growled. We never did get done thanking them for taking that thing. And you won't if you know what's good for you, Anne said sternly. I've told you already, Shigo. I don't like anyone threatening my children, especially for someone who's going to be dating one of them. So then, you're okay with this? Kim asked before Shigo could make any kind of retort. Well, I won't lie, Kimmy. This is going to be a huge adjustment. The old redhead sighed. But what I'm more concerned about right now is if you're happy or not. Huh? Do you think this relationship will make you happy? Kim blinked as she took in the question. Really, all this was happening so fast, she hadn't had any time to sit down and think about it. She looked over at Shigo and saw the tiny glint of worry in her eyes. She recognized it as the same look she had during their fight a few minutes ago. Kim was surprised at how bad she, herself, felt. She had certainly grown closer to Shigo over the past few months, and didn't want to do anything that easily hurt her. In the course of her sin, when this first started, Kim resolved to be at least civil towards Shigo for the sake of her child. But now there was an opportunity for Shin's parents to not just like each other, but love each other. She wasn't about to let it go. She smiled at the thought of Shin having a loving family. When she found Shigo returning that smile, she was again surprised. This time, about how her heart was beating faster, and the feeling of contentment washing over her. Yes, she answered as she turned back to her mother. I think it'll make me happy. That's all that matters. Anne replied with her own smile. She placed her hand over Kim's. Every parent wants to see their child happy. I'm sure that's something you two will learn soon enough. Not every parent. She goes scoffed and ruined a moment. Most normal parents, anyway. Anne replied as she looked at Shigo. Do you think Dad fits in that category? Kim asked, her uncertainty returning again. He will if he knows what's good for him, and Quinn. We had discussed it, though, and I'm sure he'll be fine with it as well. It does take some time to get used to it, is all. Yeah, I can already tell that, Kim remarked. Tell you what, Kimmy. Why don't I break the news to your father, and you two can sit down and discuss as much as you need to, Anne suggested. That would be great, Mom. The younger possible said, as he leaned forward to give her mother a hug. As Anne returned to hug and held it for a moment, she knew her baby's life was going to be going through some changes she might not understand or even tolerate, but only strengthened her resolve to be there for her daughter no matter what. When she pulled back from the hug, she went to Kim, then she go one last time before standing up. Well, this has certainly been a 
revealing your thing, and I'm sure you two have a lot you want to talk about in private. Just try not to stay up too now late now, Kim. You do still have school tomorrow, she reminded. Right, I know. Kim replied dejectedly. Anna nodded and looked at the woman next to her daughter. She go. Only thing I can say right now is welcome to the family. Thanks. I definitely feel like I treated up. She go replied. Anne smiled before they picked up the laundry basket and walked out the room, leaving the new couple alone to sit and talk. Fortunately, neither of them really knew what they were supposed to say. They each visited around a bit as they tried to think of something while also keeping their eyes open. She got the file and broke the silence. This long talk we're supposed to have? How about we do that sometime tomorrow? She suggested. Agreed. Kim nodded before a yawn overcame her. Well, I didn't realize I was so tired. Guess I better go to bed, school and all that. And I think I'm now to break the news to the rest of my family and friends. Oh? She remarked. Just gonna go around and tell them? Now you're gonna try to hide it, huh? No, because I shouldn't have to. Besides, with everything that's gone on lately, things are probably going to happen, and I don't have the strength to keep up a lie. Plus, you're no good at it. Kim blessed a bit. Yeah, that too. She pulled herself all the cops under Seagull's smile at her small victory. It started off for her room. Paused, looked back at the pregnant woman still on the couch. Still need help getting to your room? Seagull snarled. Look, princess, I already told you this. I may be pregnant, but I'm not completely helpless. With that, Seagull placed her hands on the couch as he rolled around a bit and tried to stand up. Kim placed a hand over her mouth to hide her smile. A snicker had seen that once nimble deep rolling around like a peach ball. Having trouble? Their head had marked. Shut up! Seagull snapped as she tried to stand. After another unsuccessful attempt, she finally gave in with a sigh and held out her right hand. Kim walked over and took the hand carefully helped she go to her feet. She got her back to her guest room, where he stood in front of the door for a minute. Several seconds of silence, Kim finally leaned forward and gave Seagull another kiss. It was less than a subdued one. It could be considered a goodnight kiss. But it was still a big step for both of them. As he pulled back, Kim smiled at the pale woman before she turned and started towards her room again. As he did, she couldn't help but wonder what tomorrow would bring. As it turned out, tomorrow brought with it the same thing school every day did. Bunch of boring classes and mounds of homework that probably wouldn't be looked at until late at night. Kim felt her eyelids droop as she tried to listen to Mr. Barkin drone out about something. It's hard not to stay awake under normal circumstances. But the fact that she got very little sleep last night made it worse. As tired as she was last night, she couldn't quite fall asleep. So every time she did, she had a nightmare about Ron, Monique, and Wade abandoning her because of her new lifestyle. Some even involved people refusing her help because of it, turning to the likes of Global Justice, Team Impossible, and even Jen Crabble to save them over her. But the worst dreams were the ones Ron screamed at her for betraying the trust and love he placed in her. Those were her most frequent and terrifying the real reason she didn't get much sleep. She kept turning over how she was going to break the news to him, how he was going to react. She expected him to freak out because, well, that's how Ron first reacted to the shocking news. And after it sailed through, it would go any number of different ways. She just wasn't sure what to expect. For the most part, she was sure he would eventually come around and still be her friend. With still tiny voice in doubt that kept calling her name. Possible! Mr. Barkin barked. What? Kim shouted surprised, snapping her out of her sleep dry as trance. Can't you explain to me what I was just talking about? Uh, well, you... She stammered, trying to remember the lecture. You were talking about how the overuse of metaphors can hurt the author's intention and create an incoherent, uh, mess? Trixie, why are you looking at me like that? Oh, nothing. Trixie just wants to remember how... If you remember that lesson, shut up. Mr. Barkin narrowed his eyes and stared at her for a second, seemingly unfazed by her cheerful smile. You got lucky, he muttered to continue on with his lecture. Kim let out a sigh and placed her head on the desk. This is going to be a long day, she thought in dismay. Unfortunately, Kim's prediction came true as every class seemed to drag on until the end of day. By the time she reached her locker, she felt like she had gone through a few rounds with all her villains and just wanted to get home and rest. Fortunately, she knew that wasn't an option at the moment, and she had to make a side trip before she could relax. She let out a groan of thought and rested her head against the locker door. You okay, KP? Ron's concerned voice asked her. 
He looked pretty out of it in Varkin's class. I mean, you know, more than everyone else. She went over at him and forced the best smile she could. I'm fine, just a little tired, it's all. It's been kind of crazy, she replied. <laughs> no kidding. He scoffed. How's the baby doing? She's doing fine, as is the mama. Well, that's good, I guess. Kim couldn't help but cringe at Ron's disapproving tone. Despite having defended her from the overbearing parents, Kim knew Ron didn't get along with Shido. Whether it was because of her time as one of their deadliest enemies, or as he thought she stole Kim away from him, she wasn't sure. What she was sure was that it made the task of telling him about the change in their relationship that much more difficult. She didn't want to break his heart any more than she already had, but lying to him would hurt as well. She had to tell him if any of them were going to move forward with their lives. It would have to be soon, while she still had the nerve. Ron, she forced out, I, I think I need to talk to you about something. Okay, he replied, confused by her tone. What's up? Not here. Tonight. At my home. Say, about eight. Uh, all right. You sure you're all right? Fine, fine. I just need to talk to you, and it's best to do it in private. Kim explained. Then looked down at the Rufus. He was sticking his head out of the customary pocket. When I say private, I mean with you, Rufus. <laughs> Sorry. Now Ron and Rufus were utterly confused. Um, sure. I I'll see you at eight then, Ron said. Kim only nodded before she walked away, leaving the boy and his naked mole rat to watch her leave in silence. Rufus looked up at Ron in expectation to be filled in on a conversation he obviously missed out. As human friend really tried to return. I don't know what's going on, little buddy. But I do have a seeing suspicion. Did the blonde boy say in a suspicious tone? Mm? Rufus asked unexpectedly. I think it might have happened. It? Something too dark and horrible. I dare not think about it. I just hope I'm wrong. Because I honestly have no idea what I'd do if it did happen. You know, Ron... I'm wondering if you are this close to singing Can You Feel in the Love, in tonight, in love tonight? Usually for Kim, walking into Club Bandana was as comforting as walking to her own room. She considered one of her few safe havens where she could go and just be herself. Or at the very least, a normal high school girl. It was a place where she could go to check out the latest fashion trends, indulge in a little gossiping, and check out some cute guys. Of course, that last one didn't really apply anymore. Part of why she was nervous about walking into the clothing store. The other reason was standing next to one of the window displays, putting our new shipment of dresses out in the racks. Kim felt it was appropriate to tell Monique here, since this was where they first met, and almost instantly became friends. Since then, she counted Monique as one of her best friends. So what better place to potentially end that friendship than the place that it started? She took a deep breath, and let it out slowly before she walked over to the girl. Hey, Monique, do you think you could spare some time to talk? Kim asked gently. Sure, if you don't mind me hanging out these dresses while we do. Monique replied, not missing a bee in her work. That's fine. So what's your manga? Well, it's kind of hard to talk about. Kim said unsurely. God trouble? Monique fenced I guess you could call it that. Really, though, it's... Uh, well, you know how she goes having my bite, my child? Well... Between Chico's bulging belly and your fussing over all our time, not hard to miss. I do not fuss. Kim started, but then stopped and waved her arms. It, well, that was getting off track, as he needed to stay focused. Anyway, when, since that happened, we've obviously stopped fighting and grown closer. And recently, very recently, we kind of finally gave in and admit you two have feelings for each other. But he gasped nonchalantly. Upon hearing that casual confirmation of what he was about to say, Kim stood completely still from shock when her expression masking down of her mother's form last night. When she noticed that Monique was giving her a concerned look while holding a dress in one hand and a hanger in the other, she realized she must not have said anything for a few seconds too long. She tried to respond what came out was a, for a series of half-formed words. Kim, are you alright? Monique gasped, taking a step forward. <laughs> How did you know? Kim finally managed to spit out. Only gave her an are you serious look, or a smiling seeking her head of amusement. Well, aside from the person, she started explaining, there's also the way you two look at each other. There's something more than just being together for the sake of the baby. Besides, you two already bicker like an old married couple anyway. I figured you two would come around sooner or later, but I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to freak you out. Again, Kim stared blankly at her. 
You didn't want to freak me out? She asked. Though, it was more of a rhetorical than an actual question. Spock turned over a confused face, quickly followed by a low chuckle. She soon turned to a full blown rhetorious laughter that had Kim leaning forward and slapping her left knee, while Mini questioned her friend's sanity. It didn't help matters that the universe was drawing the attention of the other customers, who also wondered the girl was crazy. Um, Kim, Mini said, placing her hand on the girl's shoulder, you really need to calm down. People are starting to stare, and I think someone's trying to call the cops. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kim replied, took deep breaths as he wiped a tear from her eye. One more breath calmed her down completely. And stood up right again, seemingly completely composed. Sorry, she pleaded. I guess this whole thing blindsided me, and I don't know how else to deal. I really thought you were going to freak out on me and stop being my friend. Oni pulled back and placed the back of her hands over her hips, and anything opposed. Girl, look at me. Do I look like that small-minded? She asked. Well, no, Kim replied. So I'm feeling ashamed for downing a friend. I just, I don't know how this whole thing is confusing. The other girl's face began to soften as she realized her pose and placed a covering hand on her friend's shoulder. No doubt, she began, but I'm your friend, Kim, and I'll be there for you. I mean, it's going to take some getting used to, but nearly frequently is how the stuff you've told me. You really think so? The redhead asked in a hopeful tone. Of course. I mean, all those stories about monkey kill ninjas that kill robots with doomsday devices, something like this seems pretty normal. Besides, it's 06. Anyone who thinks that it's gross and wrong needs to get with the times. Kim smiled broadly, before she knew what she was doing, pulled her friend to a comforting hug. Monique was a bit surprised by the action, but quickly recovered and returned to the embrace, knowing that the girl could do anything needed to Jessica right now. Thanks, Kim whispered. Like you said, no big. Monique replied with a light pat before she pulled back. Okay, hug's over now. The redhead stared at her horror that she might do something wrong. The dark-skinned girl saw her roll her eyes and the missus away her hand. Don't get the wrong idea. She said, I'm not grossed out. I just don't want to take any chance of making Seagull jealous. I've seen what she could do with the baby. I definitely don't want her to make her make her mad after she's had it. Kim chuckled. <laughs> you have a point. Anyway, I'm just glad this worked out so well. You have no idea how nervous I was about this. Like I said, no problem. Just promise me I'll visit the bug rat once he's born. Trust me, you're one of the first on the list. Good. Now anything else I can help you out while you're here? We got some new cargo stack. As tempting as that sounds, I need to get home and get ready to tell Ron about all this. Monique winced. Ooh, he doesn't know yet, huh? No. Kim sighed slumped her shoulders. I'm afraid to tell him because I think he'll have a major freak out. Yes! Well, it sounds like something he'll do. Monique mused, then turned to yours again. But seriously, no matter what happened between you two in the past, he's still your boy, Kim. I'm sure it'll be weird now for a while, but if there's one thing I learned from watching you two, no matter what the sense is, Ron's always got your back. Just give him time to adjust. Give him time, time to adjust, Kim muttered. That seems to be the theme for today. Hey, this is a big change for all of us. You're telling me. Anyway, thanks for being so understanding, Monique. For all the advice. I'll talk to you later, okay? Yep, Monique replied. You need to talk again. I always got any your helping. Kim flashed her another grateful smile. Before she turned to walk out the door. Well, that went better than I imagined. Since I can cheerfully. All I gotta do is think how to break the news to Ron. And hope that it's over, we'll still be friends. Kim's mind raced through the possible outcomes of her talk with Ron. Unfortunately, only a few of them were good. She tried to give him the benefit of the doubt that she hadn't given to Monique, but she knew he probably wouldn't act as calm as her. The major difference is that she'd never dated Monique before. That was going to play a big factor in how things turned out, for better or worse. Of course, with the way she was thinking, there was no better, and hope it could only get worse. Mildly strange was what she was hoping for. By the time she got home, she was even more tired than she was earlier in the day. Just wanted to get a quick nap before Ron came over. Fortunately, as she crossed through the living room to her room, her father spotted her from an easy chair. His critics tried to get her attention. Can we go? I think we need to talk, he said. She froze and turned slowly on the balls of her feet. There was a stern expression on her father's face that told her this talk he wanted to have was the most form of a lecture. She had a pretty good idea what it was about. Kim steeled herself and walked over to Cass and sat down, trying to keep eye contact with her father, but finding it surprisingly difficult. Your mother told me what happened between you and Shigo. He explained in an even tone. Despite her apparent, father's apparent state of ease, she found a nervous pit forming in her stomach. Dad, I... She tried to stop, but he cut her off by holding up a hand. First, 
let me say it may, my piece first. He requested, and after he denied confirmation, he began to speak again. I have some concerns about your new relationship. Besides the obvious ones, I'm afraid this might be another rebound relationship. Rebound? Kim asked incredulously. If you're talking about Ron, we broke up months ago. Several months ago, actually. Usually a rebound is right after one breakup. Besides, this situation's a little different. Isn't that what you said when you started your relationship with Ronald? Kim faltered for an answer. She couldn't come back, but he knew she knew it was right. They almost had an identical conversation by then, with both her parents concerned that her relationship with Ron was just a rebound from having her heart broken by Eric. Then she explained it was different, because Eric turned out to be a sense of drone that tricked her and when Ron poured his heart out to her, it awoke feelings she didn't know she had. But she knew they were true, and that their love would last the rest of her days. At least, this was she thought at the time. Eventually, though, she came to realize realization that it was just a rebound relationship. And as much as she loved Ron, she couldn't bring herself to love him the way a girlfriend should. Breaking up with him was one of the hardest things she had to do. But thankfully, he was on the same page as her, and they were able to remain friends afterwards. Though, not without some complications. Here she was again, defending a new relationship to her father, in almost the same fashion as before. Was he really just fickle? Was he really the kind of person to just jump from one relationship to the other? No. There was something different about this one. Was it just Jin or the incendiary issue? Something he couldn't quite place there. Something special. This isn't a rebound, Dad. She spoke softly. I really don't know what it is. But I'm sure it's not just me trying to find someone else besides Rowan. It is different in a lot of ways. Number one, Jin. It's important for her to have loving parents. I understand that, Kim. It seems possible to reply in a serious tone. I don't respect that you're thinking of what's best for your baby. In fact, I'm very proud of it. But one of the trickiest things about being a parent is knowing not only what's best for your child, but also yourself. Do you think this relationship is what's best for you? Yes, Kim answered, almost reflexively. If you want to know what a relationship is going to be, I really can't say. We just barely started but I know it's what I want. You can be mad at me or disown me or whatever, but it's not going to change how I feel. Thought it possible, quirked an eyebrow at his daughter's statement over a soft, reassuring spike, a smile across his face. I'm not mad at you, and I'm definitely not going to disown you. He told her, I just want to make sure you'll be happy. There are a lot of people out there who won't be understanding about this relationship. In fact, some of them might not want to be saved by those types. Well, then, those people are just going to have to learn to get over their narrow-minded thinking, Kim countered. I'm determined to help people, no matter what. Of course, I'm also determined to raise Shin the right way, too. So people are really going to have to get over that stuff. Now, there's a Kimmy Cub I know and love. Thanks, Dad. She smiled. But soon frowned, another thought occurred. This isn't going to hurt you at work, is it? To have a daughter that's that way? Oh, don't be silly, he remarked, raving enough. The people I work with are too smart to be hung up on something like that. Besides... Most of them are caught up in their research to worry about their own family lives, let alone colleagues. And if something did have a problem with it, well, I simply shoot them into the nearest black hole. Kim couldn't help but chuckle at that last remark. That's your solution for everything. Well, it works. Kim laughed again. She stood up, gave her father a hug. Thanks for understanding. She whispered before pulling back and starting to head out the room. It was nothing, Kimmy Cub. I could be hit when I want to be. Third of possible, replied jovially. Although, I have to have a talk with Shigo now. Maybe or not, she's going to have to follow the same rules as any of the other dates. The comment stopped Kim in her tracks as he tried to imagine what that conversation would be like. The thought of her father giving his usual space to an irritated and bewildered Shigo made her feel relaxed for the first time that day. She laughed about it as she climbed to the stairs to her room and fell down on the bed. When she calmed down her laughter and was replaced by steady breathing, she fell into a deep sleep. The thought of what would been happening tonight far from her mind. Kim visited nervously as she stood in front of Ron. She tried to practice just what she was going to tell him, but every time she did, the words just failed to form. Soon, here she was, standing before her best friend and former boyfriend, trying to find a way to tell her that her former rival became her new girlfriend. The fact that she had a girlfriend would be a big enough shock, let alone who that girlfriend was. She knew it was going to take some kind of reaction out of him. She wasn't sure what kind exactly. That uncertainty kept her from just telling him about it. Instead, caused her to make too many false starts. Kim, are you okay? Ron asked. He 
You are concerned, look. Not so much, Kim muttered. What? Uh, nothing. She lied and took a deep breath for courage. Ron, there's something I need to tell you. Something important. All right, shoot, he replied, making a consultary finger gun voices. It's about Zico and I. We've grown close. Like, really close. Like, good friends close or relationship close? The second one. Kim answered as she dropped her head and looked down at the corner of her eyes. He stood there for a moment in stunned silence as he tried to take in the news. Well, he found better after a minute or so. I think he was going to say more, but failed and simply repeated, Well, he looked at still slightly carrying Kim and tried to picture her with Seagull on a date. Again, just seemed to blow all fuses in his brain. Looked was just one thing to say. Well, he muttered as he walked over to Kim's bed and sat down. This is... Major drama, Kim offered. Yeah. He whispered, when did it officially happen last night, after he got back from Ghost City? But I think it's been building up over time. I guess I could see that. It's, it's going to take some getting used to. Like, a lot of getting used to. I know, Ron. I know. She so says he wrung her hands nervously and slumped her head again. I know it's going to be really awkward for between us, considering all that's happened, but I just hope you'll still be my friend. Ron stared at her surprise, but his song expressly was replied by a gentle smile. So he reached down and took one of her hands into his own. Kim, I'm not going to lie, but this is going to be a huge change. Bigger than when we started dating. And I promise you, I'll always be here for you. He said softly, stared at her eyes. I'll always be here for you, KP. KP, KP, KP! Kim muttered something incomprehensible at the annoying voice that kept calling her initials. So persistent, yet so familiar. She slowly forced her eyes, but all she could see was a series of colored spots, mostly peach and blonde. As her sight slowly began to refocus, she discovered those spots was actually the face of Ron Stoppable, who only a few inches away from her face. When she realized that this still mostly sleep mind came up with the only appropriate response he could, Gah! She screamed, scooting away from him as fast as he could. Duh! Ron screamed in reply, suddenly back covering his face with his arms. They both took a moment to cast their breaths, and recovered from the unexpected shock. When she finally got her heart rate back under control, Kim glared at Ron from her spot on the bed. Ron, what do you think you're doing? Me? I'm not the one that screamed bloody murder as soon as I wake up! Ron retorted. Besides, you said you wanted to see me at 8 tonight, so here I am. I've been trying to wake you up for the past two minutes! What? Kim bumbled before looking at her clock. Sure enough, I read AL2. Oh, right. Sorry. Guess I was more tired than I thought. I'll say, he replied, dead. his features softened. Kim, you all right? You've been acting weird all day, and you look so out of it. Well, helping she go out can be pretty exhausting. So even as you got out of bed, but that's not why I was tired all day. The truth is, I didn't get many, much sleep last night. I kept thinking about something. Oh, like what? Something important. She says she started to walk over to him. She stopped halfway and felt her soldiers begin to slump as her earlier anxiety returned. It's about me and Shigo. What about you and Shigo? Ron asked, something much more suspicious than he wanted to. Kim noticed the tone, but shrugged it off. Well, we've grown a lot, closer over the past couple of months. Last night, something happened. Uh-oh. Ron thought, and desperately tried to ignore the overwhelming sense of dread. Out loud, he asked, what happened? We, um, kinda kissed, she admitted. It was like her dream. Kim hugged her head and almost seen, staring around the corner of her eyes. Again, like the dream, Ron stood completely still and silent for a moment, with a look of complete shock on her face. She began to wonder if this was going to turn out exactly like her dream. In fact, a small part hoped it would seem like he took the news rather well here. Partially, she learned that why they are called dreams. As Ron expressed and changed from one of shock to one of credulous indignation. I knew it! He shouted, throwing his arms in the air. Oh man, why isn't the one a few times I actually write about something? It had to be this! This is us so, so sick and wrong! Wrong sick even! Through a Japanese cartoon, can no one ask you would have fallen to the floor, face first in Ron's outburst. Instead, the sudden weakness in her legs was overpowered by a rage, rage building up in her stomach. Any thoughts of worry or uncertainty were replaced by this new person. She glared at the boy who she now thought of as the enemy. What do you mean it's sick and wrong? 
see Karen with a shot of her own. What is so sick and wrong about it? How about the fact that it's Shingo? Ron said, to the tune of a voice not changing. You know, going hands to death, trying to take over the world of dragon, trying to kill us many, many, many times, Shingo! Any of that ringing a bell? You're still worried about that? Haven't you learned anything over the past seven months? She's changed. She's really changed, Robin. Ron. Oh, really? Well, well, she's just pretending to be real foreign so she can run out on you after the baby's born. She wouldn't know that. And how do you know? Because she loves me. The last statement brought the shouting match to a screaming scene halt. Something about the certainty and conviction in Ken's voice surprised them both for them to stop thinking about the way about doing this. He took a moment to breathe and calm down. Once he searched, he goes to be more civilized. Kim started a conversation again. She loves me. And I love her. But how do you know? Ron asked. Fear began to overcome his anger. You've been down this road before, Kim. We've been down that road, and it, won't, it didn't exactly turn out well for us. I know, I know. But something's different with her. I can't explain it, but it's there. It's different somehow. Yeah, no kidding, he scoffed. You're not the only one with arts and embassies now, but a woman one too. God, you're dating a woman now. He decides to turn away and try to take that in. He faced her again when a horrible thought entered his mind. Is this because of me? Did I do that? No, God, no, Kim replied, taking another step towards him. It wasn't because of you. In fact, you're the best boyfriend I ever had. Then why didn't it work well between us? Ron asked, face full of sorrow and regret. I don't know. Maybe it's because you were too good to me, she tried to explain. Maybe I was afraid I couldn't live up to this image that you had of me. Or maybe I was afraid I couldn't return all the love you were giving me. Maybe I'm with Shigo now, because you're such a great boyfriend that no other man could do, so I decided to go out with a woman. Oh, how I wish I could believe or understand that, he said, throwing his hands into the air again. When he recovered, he slumped his shoulders and walked to her bed, suddenly feeling very weak and needed to sit down. Kim followed suit and sat down near him, like even the space she knew he needed right now. Again, a similar image for her dream flashed through her mind. But the fact they were both sitting in our bed was the only similarity the current situation had to the dream. She so slides forward and casts him a few sparing glasses as she tried to figure out what to say next. Ron, she said softly, I, I'm sorry. The confession caught them both off guard. I never meant to hurt you, she continued. Tears began to well up in her eyes. God, that's the last thing I ever wanted to do. You've been such a good friend. Sometimes better than I deserve. I know sometimes I was petty and cruel and thought I knew what was best for you, but I really didn't. Yet somehow you always stuck by me. I don't know why, but you did. And I've been so grateful for that. She was now crying freely. A certainty were tears of sadness or joy or some mixture of the two. She just knew she couldn't stop them, no matter how hard she tried. She continued on, though. She had to get this off her chest, since it might be the last conversation they ever had. I tried to make our relationship work. I really, really did. She continued in between sniffles. I wanted it last, because I saw how happy you were. That made me happy. It really did. But I couldn't make mind myself any longer. It was wrong for both of us, and I tried to break it off as gently as I could. I do love you, Ron, but this is a friend. The best friend I ever had. And if you don't want to talk to me anymore, I can understand that. But please... Please stick it up first. She forced herself to look into his eyes. I couldn't imagine my life without you. Ron looked back at her eyes. Those bright green orbs that usually held so much courage and confidence now hurled fear and uncertainty as he began to run from her crying. He could have kicked himself for being so stupid as making a scene and upsetting her. Sure, he was a bit confused and angry himself, but here she was worried he never wanted to talk to her again. He was doing but nothing but making that scene true. He offered a soft, apologetic smile as he reached up and wiped one of her tear streaks away. Then, before he even knew what he was doing, he put his arms around her shoulders and pulled her into a tight, loving embrace. Kim was a little surprised at first, but let go. She really shouldn't have been this, as this was about the fourth or fifth hug she got today, but it was the one she needed the most. She wrapped her arms around his shoulders and held onto him tightly, as if letting go would cause him to fly away forever. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, 
as he continued to mutter into his collar. Shh, it's all right, he said softly. I'm oh, sorry, too. I acted like a jerk, and that was wrong. Heck, I even kind of suspected this after a while. But I still wasn't ready for it. Can you accept it? Can you accept me? She asked, fear still in her voice. Of course, KP. You're still my best friend. It's still gonna take some time, naturally. But I think I can get used to it. Like you said, I couldn't imagine my life without you. Thank you. No big. They sat in each other's arms for a while. Exactly how long they couldn't say. It was long enough for Kim to finally regain her composure and stop crying. Once he sure he wouldn't disappear after she let go, she pulled back and began to wipe away the dry tears with the back of her hands. Afterwards, she looked at Ron again and tried to think of something else to say, but she couldn't. Fortunately, he spoke up before she could really make a fool of herself. Feel you better? He asked. Yeah. So he replied, taking one swipe at her face. Once I could say something more than thanks, but... Don't thank me too much. I did kind of act like a jerk. You had a reason to, though. Still no excuse, he sighed. Look, if you're feeling better, then I really need to get home and take a while by myself to take all this in. Uh, right. See you at school tomorrow, right? Of course. Wouldn't pass half of my classes without you. She chuckled a bit as he caught off the bed and, after another quick hug, walked down the steps and led from her room to the rest of the house. He felt bad about lying a bit to Kim. But the truth was, he still wasn't okay with her new relationship. He doubt he ever would really be okay with it. It wasn't a fact that she was dating another woman, or a fact that the woman with Seagull was bothering him. It was a fact that she had someone else. Unless he tried to play it cool and pretend things were back to normal between them? The sad truth is, it would never be the same again. Not as long as he still felt. Ron stopped down his tracks when he entered the living room. He saw the last person he wanted to see right now. It was the person, the woman! which took his KP away from him. Even with a ballsy belly that looked ready to burst, she still sounds some way to look like she was just sitting there on the couch without a care in the world. A little soft growl before he spoke her name. SHEGO! He said softly. Fortunately, it seemed to me I said her name a little too loudly. She turned her head away from the TV and towards him. She made a disgusted face when she saw who said her name. Stoppable! She said back her own growl. Face lit up with amusement. So, I take it from all the yelling that went on upstairs, Kimmy told you about us. Yes, he did, he replied, making his way to the couch. I really don't know what to make of it, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to be watching you like a hawk, lady. So, you like to watch, huh? Seeker replied with a devious grin. Well, that's fine. You can see how much better I get along with her than you. Yeah, because the woman who placed her into death threats all those years really has room to talk. At least I don't take her to some crappy fast food Mexican place all the time. Don't diss Bayonato. That was our place. He argued as he leaned forward. Then I guess Kimmy and I ought to find a new place. A place where you're not fired. She go carrot. Forcing herself to sit upright so she could get into his face. Yeah, well. Someone dropped and stood straight up. Began to wave his hands dismissively. You know what? I'm not getting into this with you. You think you could won because or whatever? I don't care. I just care about Kim's happiness. And I know this is going to help that. So what do you suggest? She asked as she crossed her arms over her chest and turned her nose up. Then at least try to act like we get along. It's not going to be easy, because I really don't like you. I know you don't like me, but this isn't for either of us. It's for Kim. So how about we call a mutual, uneasy, skin-crawling truce for at least a little while? He suggested, then held her hand towards her. She goes stared at the outstretched hand in the corner of her eye for a moment, before slowly turning her head to look directly at him. He was right, any kind of truce would be uneasy, very skin crawling. But I also knew he was right about Kim, wanting to get along. She supposed that constantly berating her out of longtime friends and former boyfriend really wouldn't be the best way to start the relationship. Plus, as fun as it was to tease Stoppable, she just didn't have the energy for it. Slowly, she uncrossed her arms and outstretched one of her hands towards his. Their heads met and grasped an awkward shake that lasted all two seconds. Or drew her hand, and Ron let out a sigh of relief. You know, for a second there, I thought you'd try to ignite your hand and burn my off, he admitted. So did I, Seeger remarked. There was an awkward silence between them then. Ron knew he should continue on with his plan to head home. For some reason, his feet didn't want to move. So he simply stood there, scratching the back of his neck, nervously while Seeger tried to ignore him and focus on the TV again. But she couldn't do that, as he desperately wanted to fire a plasma ball at him to get him to move. Again, the spirit of truth 
Also for the baby's well-being, she held back. So, she finally said, trying to alleviate the tension. Since you've known her the longest, and used to date her for a while, any useful tips I should know about possible? Well, first, I wouldn't call her by her last name, Ron advised. Secondly, you got to kind of take her bossiness with a grain of salt. It doesn't happen that often, but there's signs when she gets to this area, she has to be right, and it can get pretty ugly. Yeah, I've seen that bit. Luckily, I'm used to dealing with that kind of thing. I can handle it. Seagull amused. Anything else? He sighed as his face took on a wistful expression. Make her happy. You do whatever you can to make her happy and keep her. Definitely want to keep her. Because if you don't, you'll find your heart practically breaking every time you look at her. You won't be able to see just Kim anymore, but one of the most beautiful, intelligent, caring human beings on the planet. I realized that you had that for a while. That all those wonderful traits were aimed for only just for you. Somehow you let her go. You'll try, but you won't ever really get over it. She goes stared dumbfounded at the obviously unintended confession. She was really just trying to get him to say something. Once he asked a question, figuring to give out some lame advice about her favorite flower or dress or something. She didn't really expect that. She also never expected the bottom phone could be so deep. Ron, she said softly, surprising herself by using his first name. I need to go, he muttered, either ignoring her or not hearing her. As he started to walk towards the door, she would turn as best she could to see him for the counts. Wait, she called out. He stopped until he said towards her, Thanks. For this end, for sticking up for me at my parents, she said. He smiled at that. Nah, I didn't really do anything. It was Kim mostly, he replied. Still, thought that counts, right? I guess. With that, he finally made it out of the possible home, leaving Seagull to think about how little she really knew about him, and all of Ken's friends, really. She so didn't know the girl had any more outside of Ron, Onique, and that computer dork of hers. But there was time to learn now. Trying to fit in all she could, at least until Shin arrived. Then it would be all about her. She could rub her belly as a thought. I have it she picked up lately. For she sailed back into what's more TV. Her quiet time was soon disturbed again, but this time by a much more welcome guest. She smiled as Kim watched in the living room and tried to get up to greet her, only to have Kim most of her to try to stay back down and face the creole green, green woman. Ending on impulse, Kim leaned over and gave her a quick peck on the cheek. Her sailing next to her. Did you happen to see Ron come this way? She asked, not really sure why. Yeah, we touched for a bit. Seiko came off off handily. At the small sea gas, she looked at Kim to find panic express on her face. Don't worry, princess, we didn't yell at each other too much. As we came out of agreement, then we'll try to get along for your sake. No promises, though. Kim relaxed and smiled again. That's all I really ask. Thanks for the effort, though. Welcome. Don't forget to thank Ron, though. It was his idea. Her head and nod before something struck her. Wait, did you just call him Ron? She could look at her with a useful cat-like grin. Well, that's his name, isn't it? Yeah, but I usually call him Ron. You usually call him Stoppable or Buffoon. Things change, Kimmy. I think we learned that lesson pretty well last night. <laughs> no kidding. They lasted to a rather uncomfortable quiet as he bathed in the glow of television. A few minutes, Seagull leaned over to lay her head on Kim's shoulder, and on state, Kim wrapped her arm around Seagull and persisted it so she could rest on the woman's large stomach. Seagull placed her own hand on top of Kim's. They both let out a sentence sigh. This is good, takes a getting used to, huh? Oh, yeah, Kim replied. Ron had never been so thankful his parents were almost chronic overtime workers. Man, when he came home, he didn't have to explain to him why he looked so downtrodden. He knew he probably didn't, couldn't try to explain the situation to them in time. But now, he didn't want to talk about it. At least not to them. If we made it to his room, he closed the door with his body and leaned on it as he let out a pathetic sigh. A small cheering noise coming from his computer desk. Forced him to look over it and look down at his pet bunny. So? Riffin squeaked expectantly. I was right. It happened. He said as he fell into his chair. Oh, sorry. The mole rat said softly. Patting Ron's hand gently. It's okay, buddy. I'll get used to it, I guess. Right now, I just... I need to sort things out. With that, he moved the mouse to his computer around to take it out of sleep mode and access the internet. He only found himself thankful. This time, for the fact, his parents came from the bottom of high case connection. At least it didn't take him as long to come around as he did cable, he thought. He had quick scan his favorites and brought up a site that quickly became one of his most frequently used ones. 
Slave Journal account. He had set it up shortly after he and Kim started dating, so he could get out all the emotions he was feeling and not run the risk of exploding. Of course, the breakup caused many entries to be filled out well. Mostly depressing, self-depreciating things, and only a few bad words towards Kim. He felt like he couldn't stay mad for very long no matter what happened. So he was sort of a come to accept and maybe like this new relationship with Shigo. But just take more time. At the very least, he had a place to put down his thoughts so he wouldn't drive him crazy. Well, that by, he called up the empty scroll screen and ran a quick crack of his fingers before typing away furiously. Hey, kids! Do you rem remember Live Journal? No! Neither do I! The Supplable Adventures. It finally happened. Kurt Mood confessed. Confused. Current song? Aerosmith's what it takes. Definitely gonna friend lock this post and probably delete it later. Just need to get it out before my head explodes. Yeah, I know I said it before, but this time it feels like it. For those of you keeping up with this journal, you know about how Kim has been taking care of her former arch enemy, Shigo, since Shigo was implanted with a virus combining both their DNA, thus making Shigo pregnant. Naturally, right? Well, Kim's been, well, pretty much Kim like during the whole thing. Taking charge, looking after Shigo, making sure her baby will come out healthy, all that good stuff. I think it's the whole ordeal I kept seeing signs that they're getting closer to each other. First, I tried to write it off as me thinking too much. Yes, that does happen every once in a while. But I couldn't take the feeling something more was going on. I didn't really want it to cause it to seem so sick and wrong, but it was there, at least in my mind. Then, I got the bronze cell on me, does now. I was right. They're a couple. Kim Possible and Shigo are a couple. I really don't know how to feel right now. Well, not entirely true. When Kim told me I had to like a complete jackass and ended up upsetting her. Still kicking myself for that one. The last thing I ever wanted to do was hurt KP again. That's where the confusion sits in. I realized something tonight. I'm not upset because Kim's going out with another woman. Granted, that's going to be weird for a while. It's the fact that she's going out with someone. More importantly, or accurately ever, I realized that I'm still in love with her. I mean, I love her no matter what. It's just a friend. I thought I got back to that place. But I was wrong. She could have told me she was going out with anyone else and still feel this way. Why well, did I tell her so badly? I love her in a boyfriend way. Tell her I could be the one to help her raise her daughter. I could do the dad thing. Especially if I'm spending the rest of my life with someone as great as KP. I wanted to tell her all this. I didn't even have the chance while we were hugging. But I just couldn't. She was only going through much pain and confusion. And then I... I didn't want to add to it by telling her how I really felt. So I did the little friend thing. I told her I'd be there for her and all that. And I will. I know it's going to tear me up every time I see her and she go together. God, I wish I could tell her. But she's gotten over me and is ready to have a family. She's dead on set on having Seiko raise the baby. So if I did tell her, I wouldn't just be ruining our lives, but little shits as well. I can't do that. I'm not going to be that kind of guy. But then again, I don't know how I could keep going along with these feelings inside. Not have it tear me up. The whole thing reminds me of a line from some Stephen King movie series I saw a while back. When every decision hurts, how do you know which one is the right one? I don't think I'll tell Kim. 